So today's video is going to include some recaps of previous information as well as uh, some new hardware and software information. Blah, blah, blah. But anything you guys want to keep an eye out for or go straight to in this video as opposed to, you know, sitting through it like a like a pleb, uh, just take a look at these timestamps right over here on my left and you'll be able to go where you want. Okay, so do you guys remember the Future Proof headset that I talked about a couple months back, the Pimax 8KX? Well, it, it was re-announced at the CES show last week, but as part of this re-announcement, they also said that it, it's finally gone into mass production, so you can get your very own now, as opposed to not even being available for sale yet. The downside to this massively amazing headset is that it's going to run you $1,300 for the headset alone. They are also, however, offering a bundle that comes with a pair of Valve Index Knuckles controllers, as well as the tracking base stations. And right now, they're offering this neat little sale where you'll also be getting a silicon protective sleeve for the headset itself, as well as a copy or a Steam VR code, probably, for Half-Life Alex. That one is going to run you 1800 and change. But in the event that you... <coughs> That's assuming that you have almost $2,000 to throw away. Well, wouldn't really be throwing it away. Because blah, 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 future-proof headset, blah, blah. Use it for like another eight, nine years. But assuming you guys have that kind of time and money to, to put down on a headset, this one is going to be your best bet. So, I'm not sure how many of you guys have noticed this or not, but whenever I bring up another form of technology on this channel, it always circles back to virtual reality in one way or another. The best examples I can use for this include 5G mobile networks and Wi-Fi Generation 6. And at the time that I brought them up, I said that they both could be used for streaming virtual reality content. And that seems to be precisely what Panasonic, the television maker, plans to use for their new virtual reality glasses. Which looks more like a pair of sunglasses than anything else you've seen. I swear to God. If you don't believe me, it's this picture right here. Now, as far as whether or not it's according, whether or not it's actually going to be useful as VR gaming remains to be seen. The primary focus of it is going to rest on VR sports viewing and virtual travel experiences. So, more input rather than output. So, you aren't going to be seeing quite as much uh, bandwidth taken up. However, uh, the, the biggest takeaways here are that it's going to be the first one to offer micro OLED LED panels, organic LED panels. And because it would use light emitting diodes, it would take away the screen door effect. At least that's what they claim. And as a result, uh, <coughs> hmm. due to their uh, extensive research, they're also going to be the first to support high dynamic range. So there'll be so there'll be much more vivid colors than you'll be able to feel or express on a typical VR headset. The one of the downsides though is that due to its size, it has kind of a boxy image and much more separated than you would find more more classic, classic style virtual reality headsets. Um, and on top of that, it, al although it's 
although it, it's lighter in a sense, it's far more front heavy than you would find most typical headsets to be. As uh, the typical one is going to be more in a halo style, where it's going to be a, a lot more balanced than you would find. Then you would find these things. Um, one of the other things that you'll be able to look forward to when this thing does launch is that it'll have two ways to connect to anything. One of them is going to be a pair of cables coming out of the eyepieces that'll attach to a, to a gaming PC, pulling the headset down to the face, as well as an option for a single USB Type-C cable running from one of the glasses arms. Now, whether or not whether or not those pairs of cables would actually provide power to the to the glasses remains to be seen. And there there's nothing in this interview that would suggest as much. But because of what the USB-C is, uh, that is not only a not only an information transference cable, but also power transference, we might be able to see something along those lines while using the USB Type-C option, assuming that ever actually launches as well. However, The Verge did in fact see a non-functioning prototype that saw that very same option. So, we should see some, some very high quality sun, sunglasses or VR headsets coming out of Panasonic in the near future. Now the next thing we do have to contend with is augmented reality glasses. For those of you that aren't already aware of what augmented reality is, an excellent example of this would be Pokemon Go, where you could see maybe Charmander sitting on your on your kitchen stove and you throw your Pokeball right at him so you can catch him and keep him and, and battle all, all your friends and neighbors and pretend to have a good time. And, you, you know, maybe he'll actually burn up your homework every once in a while. Wish you do mine. Anyway, that is essentially what augmented reality is. Using the backdrop of the real world to add virtual, re virtual objects on top of it. Now, as far as augmented reality glasses are concerned, we don't have a whole lot of options. However, Facebook is aiming to change that, as Mr. Zuckerberg himself has said that they are going that we are going to get a breakthrough in tech glasses this decade. Facebook, you may remember, is is the proud owner of Oculus VR Technologies and has been working since 2014 on virtual reality. However, ever since September of 2018, they've been, they have been working on augmented reality. And on top of that, they are, they are planning to partner with Ray-Ban's parent company, Luxottica, to design, <coughs> to design and launch the product at some point between 2023 and 2025. So that's like a, a decent size window for them to be able to market this thing and be able to prove that it's actually going to be well usable. Is, is it going to be good enough for the masses? <coughs> and with about five or six years of R&D, the only answer I can assume at this point is yes. Because Facebook and Oculus now at this point are huge companies. And six years of R&D from a huge company should give you, should give you a, a high quality device. Even if it bombs at launch, you know, like Stadia did and every day since, then you will still be able to have that prize in your library on on the 
on your mantle of memorabilia, you know, like all, all that stuff behind me. <clears throat> but they do have one or two competitors. And their biggest competition right now is a company called Enreal, whose $500 augmented reality go goggles look strikingly similar to a pair of sunglasses. And they far outweigh the competition right now, largely because not only are they significantly cheaper than most any other augmented reality goggles you could find on the market, $3,500 for HoloLens is an excellent example, but they are also form-fitting and stylish. Strikingly similar to a pair of sunglasses, if you can believe it. Just like those Panasonic ones. Uh, the VR glasses. But while they not only have aims to make this affordable, but many of the many of the key issues that they may possibly have in a first generation model, such as uh, power, flexibility, uh, heat dissipation, and productivity, they're tackling those one at a time. And the easiest way they're doing most of that is by having your phone do most of the most of the processing through a USB-C connection that you would connect to the glasses themselves. So instead of paying over two thousand dollars for the Magic Leap for the Magic Leap goggles, you'll be able to get a pair of sunglasses for five hundred. Just connects to your smartphone, and you're able to do whatever it is you want to do on them. And because they're as cheap as they are, they are likely to see far more. <clears throat> excuse me, far more consumer acceptance than you would see out of the other two headsets. And while they are. While they haven't yet been set for release, they are in fact polishing light to aim for a second quarter of 2020 consumer release. All the while, continuing to improve the general hardware layout. So hopefully, by the time Gen 2 rolls out, we'll be seeing drastically significant improvements. Or at least, marked improvements. Oh, almost forgot. Uh, two things. Um, first, I just started doing beat mapping for custom songs on Beat Saber, the PC version on Steam or whatever. Uh, if you guys want to hear any custom songs that aren't already available in Beat Saber or one of your other modding services, just, just send me a link or a, a video or a song description or, or whatever. Just let me know what it is you want me to map for you, and then I'll not only map it for you, but I'll end up playing it on my other channel. It, it's the other one's a, the game streaming one, uh, Porky Powers. Anyway, uh, like I said, I'll map it and I'll play it so you guys can see exactly what it is, as well as uh, obviously it'll still end up getting posted somewhere, and I'll tell you where it did so you guys can download it if you actually like the way it plays on the channel